Xəbər verdiyimiz kimi, oktyabrın ikisində Prezident İlham Əliyev Əl-Cəzirə televiziya kanalına müsahibə verib. Bugün həmin müsahibə Əl-Cəzirə televiziya kanalında yayımlanıb. Hörmətli tamaşaçılar, indi müsahibənin tam variantını təqdim edirik. President of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Very glad to see you. Uh, it's been over two decades since the present conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan has begun, and you've gone through lots of ups and downs, but uh, no peace has, been su has succeeded so far. Why has this been conflict dragging for so long? The main reason is uh, that Armenia doesn't want peace. They want to keep our lands under occupation forever. They don't want to change status quo, and this is the reason why it lasted so long. Because otherwise, if Armenia demonstrated goodwill and acted in compliance with the uh, resolutions of uh, main international organizations, the conflict would have been resolved many years ago. Because back in 1993, uh, when Armenia uh, occupied part of our territories, the uh, UN Security Council adopted four resolutions demanding uh, immediate, uh, full and uh, unconditional withdrawal of their troops from our territories. But these resolutions remain on paper. Uh, Minsk Group, which was created in order to facilitate to find a solution, uh, already uh, is in uh, activity for 28 years and also without any result. Therefore, one, the main reason is, mm -hmm. as I said, the position of Armenia. The second reason is that lack of insistence uh, from the side of the mediators and lack of pressure on Armenia to start implementing resolutions of uh, United Nations Security Council. On many occasions, I raised this issue and was saying that uh, international sanctions must be imposed on Armenia to force them to uh, comply with resolutions and to start liberation of our territories. But uh, my appeals were not uh, answered properly. And now it's what's happening is a result of Armenia's destructive policy. So you say Azerbaijan doesn't have the, uh, the international support that it deserves based on the international uh, legal concerns? From point of view of uh, uh, international law norms and the decisions and resolutions of international organizations, we have very broad support. As I already mentioned, UN Security Council resolutions, which is the resolutions of the highest international body, they adopted uh, resolutions asking Armenia or demanding Armenia to withdraw from the troops. The General Assembly of the United Nations did the same. Other international organizations like Islamic Cooperation Organization, Non-Aligned Movement, European Parliament and others, they did the same, but it is not enough. So we have a legal framework for resolution, but there is not enough uh, practical pressure on aggressor. And here we see the contradiction between international law and what is happening in reality. So such an open ignorance of the norms and principles of international law by Armenia should be a good uh, indicator that international law doesn't work or it works selectively. In some cases, as you know, uh, Security Council resolutions are being implemented within days, if not hours, but in our case, it's on paper for so many years. So lack of practical pressure on aggressor is also one of the reasons why the conflict lasts so long. Well, you have accused Armenia of starting the war the, this conflict actually and uh, many can argue that Armenia having the territory it has and victory of the Velvet Revolution in 2018 wouldn't risk starting an armed conflict. What would you say? Well, uh, I don't know uh, what is the reason for such kind of uh, analysis but what we see here we see what is happening on the ground. If we look at what Armenia did uh, after so-called revolution uh, during the last two years and what they uh, declared, we will see that they were always provoking us and they were aiming at starting new war and the reason is to disrupt negotiations completely. Uh, they made several uh, military provocations against Azerbaijan. On 12th July 
They attacked our villages and uh, military positions far away from the region of the conflict in the uh, area of Tuvuz, uh, in the western part of Azerbaijan, on Armenia-Azerbaijani border. And it was absolutely uh, difficult to understand why they did it. They uh, attacked us with heavy artillery. The first victims among military servicemen were Azerbaijanis. Four our military servicemen were killed immediately. And one 76-year-old villager. So we had to respond. And after we responded, and they suffered a bitter defeat, they withdrew and started to plea for ceasefire. And then I said that we do not have any military objectives on the territory of Armenia. Therefore, as soon as we push them back, and they uh, already realized that it did not work, the clashes stopped. It lasted mm, only four days. Uh, then, August 23, uh, the sabotage group, which was sent by Armenian army to penetrate our territory and uh, to commit acts of terror, uh, was uh, dispersed. And the head of the sabotage group was detained. And he is now under investigation. He gives evidence that uh, he was sent in order to commit terror acts uh, against our civilians and military servicemen. It was not us who did it. Mm -hmm. It was them. And then what happened on the 27th of September is a logical continuation of this policy. Uh, apart from that, if you look at what they have declared, what they have stated, it's also absolutely clear that they were provoking us. Armenian Prime Minister a year ago made a statement that uh, Karabakh is Armenia and uh, this statement makes negotiations absolutely senseless because one of the main uh, item on the negotiation table is a return of the occupied territories to Azerbaijan. And if he says Karabakh is Armenia, and in his understanding, Karabakh is not only former Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous District, but the also all the occupied territories, that means that they don't want to return these territories back. That means end of negotiations. So why would Armenia risk uh, a provocation? Uh... First, I think they uh, wanted to uh, destroy completely negotiation process. Then they wanted to put the blame on us, as they do it, and say that, look, with Azerbaijan it's not possible to have negotiations. And I think one of the uh, reasons could be the internal difficulties, because we know what is happening now in Armenia. They suffer very serious political crisis. Uh, the leader of main opposition party was arrested two days before uh, they launched an attack. Uh, previous two presidents under criminal investigation, and actually a dictatorship regime have been established in Armenia. All the promises which the prime minister was giving after revolution just are on paper. Nothing was implemented. They have one of the worst in the world per capita situation with pandemic. So to distract attention, and he managed to do it. And now what he's trying to do, to consolidate society uh, in front of so-called Azerbaijani aggression and to strengthen his uh, personal rule. So mm -hmm. everything is very logical from their point of view, but they did a very big mistake. And moreover, before the aggression, several days, uh, before I was speaking at the uh, UN uh, General Assembly, saying that they are preparing for war and they must be stopped. And that's what happened. And um, you said before that the Armenian military must unconditionally withdraw from the territories that they had occupied. Yes. Um, what do you aim for in the region now? Who? As Azerbaijan. We? Yes. We still uh, you know, keep our position unchanged. What I am uh, demanding is absolutely in line with international law because the whole world recognizes territorial integrity of Azerbaijan and no country in the world recognized so-called Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. What I'm saying is completely almost the wording of UN Security Council resolutions, and they need to uh, leave our territory, and then the war will stop, and then the conflict will come to an end. And then maybe sometime later, people of Azerbaijan and Armenia can again 
live together in peace. Uh, so that's our position and it is unchanged. And uh, it is based on historical truths, it is based on international law, and also it is based on today's political and geopolitical realities in our region. I think Armenian government overestimated uh, their so-called importance on global arena, overestimated the possible international support to them, and made very serious mistakes provoking us, attacking us, and now they are suffering the very serious defeat. Um, would you accept going to the negotiating table with Armenia's Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan? Actually, negotiations uh, stopped because after his uh, statement that Karabakh is Armenia, I said there's no room for negotiations. But uh, Minsk Group co-chairs uh, were uh, making requests to me that uh, Azerbaijan show maybe more, uh, how to say, understanding with respect to uh, the fact that the Armenian government is new and maybe they do not completely control their emotions and their words. Mm, and I said, okay, let's, let's try. We want to find a peaceful solution. Therefore, we waited for so many years and probably negotiations would have been continued if not for this destructive approach. And after that statement, well, I had a meeting with the Armenian Prime Minister, but they were absolutely uh, meaningless. They were formal. He was telling me that they are not going to give territories back. And then what to talk about if they don't want to do that, if they go against elaborated principles by the Minsk Group, which they elaborated for years, and means that he destroys negotiation. Negotiations cannot be uh, held unilaterally. We need to have a partner, but in Armenia, so far, we don't have a partner for negotiations. So can we say that Azerbaijan's precondition uh, for coming to a negotiating table is that Armenia withdraws from the uh, occupied territories? Actually, it was Armenian prime minister who put precondition on us. And that's, by the way, another provocation uh, I think several months ago, he put seven preconditions to Azerbaijan. Actually, he wanted to dictate his agenda to us and to the Minsk group. And one of those preconditions was that Azerbaijan should negotiate with so-called Nagorno-Karabakh authorities. And not only us rejected it, also Minsk group rejected it, because it changes completely the format of negotiations, which was elaborated for more than 20 years, and negotiations are um, taking place between Armenia and Azerbaijan. So he puts precondition on us, and we rejected it. And the reason why he did it was, uh, again, he wanted negotiations to stop and uh, keep uh, the status quo unchanged. As far as we are concerned, we are always ready for negotiations. We never rejected them. We had difficult times in negotiation process in previous years. Not everything was going smoothly, but with the previous Armenian leaders, uh, we had a process and we were elaborating the uh, so-called step-by-step approach. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been in this process for so many years. It was not a useless time. I think we made a very big progress uh, I'm in this process since 2003 and uh, I worked with two previous Armenian uh, presidents and we made progress. It was not easy. We had, of course, a big uh, you know, variety of views, but we were making step by step uh, progress and we elaborated what we have now. And after Pashinyan came to power, he not only destroys everything was before him, and he wants to pretend that Armenia before him did not exist, and he is now the creator of new Armenia. He destroyed all the elaborated principles. Therefore, full responsibility is on him and his government. And by the way, reasonable people in Armenia, they understand it. They were already uh, making statements, alarming Armenian population, that this person leads their country to catastrophe. It's not a way how to behave on negotiations. It's not a way how to provoke Azerbaijan. You know, another provocation was so-called inauguration of so-called leader of Nagorno-Karabakh in the ancient Azerbaijani city of Shusha. 
No mm -hmm. other so-called uh, Nagorno-Karabakh leader did that. Why he did it? In order to insult the feelings of Azerbaijanis. Uh, then they decided to move so-called parliament of Nagorno-Karabakh from Hankandi to Shusha. Why? Another insult on Azerbaijanis. They openly resettle uh, Armenians from Lebanon on the occupied territories, demonstrated on TV, which is a brutal violation of Geneva Convention, in order to demonstrate uh, their hatred to us. Everything what he did was to destroy negotiation process. Therefore, now when they are pleading for negotiations, when Pashinyan calls world leaders many times and is complaining about Azerbaijan, I think those leaders should tell him, it was you who destroyed negotiations. It was you who provoked Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. It was you who insulted the feelings of Azerbaijanis. Therefore, you must be responsible for that. And Armenian people, and I made an appeal a couple of days ago to Armenian people, they should make him responsible for that. We don't have a problem with Armenian people. They are our citizens. We have thousands of Armenians living in Azerbaijan. And those who live in Nagorno-Karabakh area, also we consider them our citizens. Yes. And we invite them to live together with us as many other uh, nationalities and uh, ethnicities who live in Azerbaijan. Therefore, uh, Armenia should uh, refrain completely from these provocative statements. They should uh, uh, make new statements that Karabakh is not Armenia, and then we will see. So, within this deadlock, political deadlock, uh, would a Russian mediation work for Azerbaijan? Russia is one of the uh, countries which is a mediator, along with United States and France. And uh, during my uh, involvement in this process for 17 years, uh, all three countries were equally involved in the process, and there was and there is uh, quite a high level of. Uh, coordination in the process. Uh, of course, Russia has a special position because it's a neighbor to Azerbaijan, neighbor to uh, the region. It does not have a state border with Armenia, but nevertheless, uh, Russia is a country which uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia mm -hmm. have uh, good relations and uh, historical relations. Therefore, of course, their role and their uh, I would say uh, capability to uh, mediate are much higher due to objective reasons from those who are situated far away from the region and maybe not completely uh, know what was happening here during the last decades. Therefore, we think that free countries they should continue to work together if all of them keep neutrality. This is important. And we're concerned that just recent days we, f we see some statements which are counterproductive and which uh, are uh, demonstrating a kind of a, uh, you know, change in the position in neutrality. Every country can have its position, it's normal. But if you're a mediator in such a sensitive issue, you should act in this capacity. If you want to act in your national capacity, of course, but then you should step down from the Minsk Group co-chairmanship and say whatever you want, accuse whomever you want, uh, deliver stories about what happened which has no proof, and of course nobody would object. But if you are a mediator, you have to be neutral. You have to be mediator, otherwise mediation will not be acceptable by us. So there are calls from the international community for a ceasefire, but given the uh, latest statements by both Azerbaijan and, and Armenia's side, uh, are you choosing to ignore international calls for a ceasefire? No, we are not ignoring, but ceasefire cannot be achieved unilaterally. I'm just trying to deliver the message uh, to uh, those leaders who called me uh, during these days, uh, saying that it was not Azerbaijan who started. We had to defend ourselves. If we did not respond uh, this time the way we did, today we would have had hundreds of victims among civilians. We still have a lot. We have, this morning I received information, we have 19 
victims among civilians, uh, two of them are children. We have uh, 54 wounded people among civilians. And we have more than 300 houses damaged or completely demolished by Armenian artillery. And they attack our villages, they attack our people, they want to kill as many Azerbaijanis uh, they can. They started yesterday to use long distance missiles from the territory of Armenia. Thus, they make these uh, weapons which they use a legitimate target for Azerbaijan. And we, we have to destroy those targets. And then they will accuse us that we attack Armenian territory. They want it. They want to invite third parties to the conflict that these parties defend themselves and provide for them another 30 years of uh, illegal occupation. Ceasefire, okay, but on what conditions? Conditions must be that they withdraw from the territories. And I said just two days ago, let them start withdrawal. Let us have the timetable for withdrawal. Let them undertake serious obligations proved by uh, mediators and also uh, obey the ceasefire regime. And of course, we will also do the same. Why should we uh, need this military clash? We need our territories back by peaceful means. And we demonstrated for 28 years our willingness to have peaceful settlement. During these 28 years, there have been times of clashes. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the biggest is now. This, uh, there was another four years ago. So that's our point, and I think it's absolutely reasonable taking into account what I've said about political and uh, military provocations from mm -hmm. Armenia. So Azerbaijan military uh, gained some uh, advance on the ground. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And took back some of the villages, especially around the Fazula district. Does it mean that Azerbaijan is not going to withdraw from those areas that uh, they have regained control of? No, of course not, because these areas belong to us. These areas, uh, the areas of our ancient lands, these areas where our people lived for centuries, and they were occupied and destroyed by Armenians. There are pictures in the internet of what happened to Fizuli, what happened to Agdam, what happened to other uh, cities and uh, villages of Azerbaijan in the uh, southern eastern part of the occupied territories. In the uh, districts of Lachin and Kelbajar, where they uh, had some illegal settlements, also there are destructions, but not as heavy as in this area. Therefore, it's our land. We regained it. We regained it uh, by uh, force. We regained it giving uh, our uh, victims. We will never step back from them. Mm -hmm. We will leave there our people who were forcefully deported from the, those territories. Today, they live with one uh, dream, with one goal for almost 30 years to go back. And I can tell you that there was a very illustrative example when in April 2016, we liberated part of the territories. Again, as a result of Armenian aggression, we launched a counterattack. And one of the village which was destroyed by Armenians and Azerbaijanis could not return there because Armenians positions were on the mountains. Uh, we built for refugees the new village and even those who never saw that land, those who were born after, all of them returned. Jojo mm -hmm. Merjanli. I said Jojo Merjanli is a symbol of our uh, dignity, symbol of our uh, will. And Jojo Marjanli is a symbol of our return. And I said, our return starts now. So I'm sure that all those who have been deported from those territories will go back. There is no way to go back because everything is destroyed. Everything. Not a single building. Everything was destroyed. And uh, of course, we will help and we will rebuild the cities. We will rebuild the villages. We will return the initial names because Armenians committed a cultural genocide against us. They destroyed all the mosques on the occupied territories. They keep pigs and cows in the mosques, thus 
insulting the feelings of all the Muslims. They change the names of our cities, change the names of our villages. All the names will go back. We will go back to our lands. This is our legitimate right. This is a historical uh, task for us, and I'm sure we'll succeed. Um, the Caucasus region is a very complex one, um, not only in terms of geography, but also when it comes to culture, ethnicity, and social structures. Do you believe in uh, people's right to self-determination? Uh, you know, uh, this is uh, the point which Armenian propaganda often uses, thus trying to mislead the uh, international public opinion, which, uh, of course, in, in broadly ordinary people, they are not specialists in international law. But uh, uh, there are very uh, clear identification of the basic principles of international law, which have their reflection in the Helsinki Final Act. Principle of ter territorial integrity is prevailing. Self-determination is one of the important principles of international law. But if we go back to uh, UN Charter, if we go back to Helsinki Final Act, we'll see that self-determination should not damage territorial integrity of the countries. Another important point, the territorial integrity of the country cannot be changed by force and cannot be changed without an agreement of the people of the country. Therefore, in this case of Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, of course, self-determination is not working the way how Armenians want to do it. And another argument, Armenian people already self-determinated themselves. They have independent Armenian state. Today, Armenians live everywhere. They live in France, they live in America, they live in Russia, they live in Middle East. Let them uh, ask for self-determination in those countries. What be, would be reaction of uh, authorities of those countries if Armenians would ask the land which does not belong to them and ask this land only because they now became majority? That their tactics which they use for many, many years to come to ask for support, to ask for land, and then to start changing the historical identity of the territory, making fake news about their so-called ancient history, and demand those lands for them. Mm -hmm. Those countries which uh, uh, want to give uh, self-determination to Nagorno-Karabakh, let them give part of their land to Armenians from Nagorno-Karabakh, take them and give self-determination there. I would see what would be their reaction. Well, uh, the way things look right, uh, right now, you have the Russians, Iranians, Turks, the French, and the Americans signaling concerns over the conflict. Uh, could this conflict ever become a regional one? I don't think so. I think there is no uh, ground for that, and we are uh, strongly against this conflict to transform into a regional. That's what Armenia wants to do. Therefore, they invent fake news about some external uh, support to Azerbaijan. Uh, but at the same time, they are asking for external support for themselves. That's why I have the feeling that uh, their main target now, when they suffer a very serious defeat on the battlefield, they want to make this conflict regional. But I am sure that the countries which you mentioned, they will never allow it to happen because security in our region is in the interests of all the regional countries. And among those countries which you mentioned, it's Turkey, Russia, Iran are regional countries. Other countries, they have nothing to do here in the region. And they're not regional countries. They have the mandate to facilitate mm -hmm. the negotiations because that happened in 1992. Uh, we are not responsible, me personally, for this composition of the Minsk group. Of course, if we decided today about the composition of any contact group which could facilitate uh, peace, of course, composition would have been completely different. I don't want now to specify, but some countries wouldn't have place in those groups because of their biased behavior. So we need to do everything, especially the regional countries, to stay away from the conflict, not to interfere in any sense to the conflict, and give the 
signal to Armenia, stop occupation. Stop occupation and then you will see the benefits. Then you will integrate with the regional uh, economic uh, investments, energy, transportation projects, which Armenian uh, leadership for many years deprived Armenia from because of this aggression. So uh, we need to do everything that this conflict uh, stops mm -hmm. as soon as possible. The resolution is found as soon as possible. We are not in a position to listen statements or stop it and we will work, we will negotiate, we will help. We heard it many times. We don't have time to wait another 30 years. The conflict must be resolved now. Those who want to help Armenia, so-called their close partners, let them help by telling them, leave the territories, demonstrate your will, stop firing, tell that today or tomorrow, only one week, I will leave Agdam. Next time, next week, I will leave Fizuli. Next week, I will leave Kalbajar, etc. And we will stop. So this is a very fair position. This is a position aimed at peace, not at war. What about Armenia's claims that Ankara is militarily involved in this conflict with its uh, planes, etc.? This is uh, false information. It has no proofs. I already made uh, statements about that. Turkey is our brotherly country. From the very first day of Armenian attack, from the very first hour, Turkey expressed its full support to Azerbaijan. My brother, President Erdogan, many times made very important statements and uh, yesterday speaking at the opening session of the parliament he made another very important statement that Turkey is next to Azerbaijan and uh, Azerbaijan is not alone. We feel this support, we are very grateful to our Turkish brothers and president and other officials. But Turkey in no other way is involved in the conflict. One of the Armenian fake news, which now is not all any longer in the media, was that Turkish F-16 shut down Armenian Su-25. This is fake news. Where are the proofs? No proofs. Every plane which lands and takes off is in the computer. Everybody can see what is happening. And I wonder why Ms. Group co-chair countries, France, United States, Russia, they do not comment on that. They do not comment on this fake news. Some of them comment on other fake news, that Azerbaijan, with Turkey, invited uh, terrorists here. Well, this is what I would like to ask, Mr. President. Uh, Armenia also accuses Turkey for transferring Syrian opposition fighters uh, to Azerbaijan. This is fake news, absolutely. The same fake news as they said that Turkish F-16 shut down the Su-25. The Su-25 had an accident, uh, I, I was informed, but it hit the mountain because of unexperienced uh, pilot. But they say they have evidence to prove Let that. them show it. Where is evidence? Not only Armenia. Unfortunately, President of France, I heard yesterday, made a statement about that. And uh, he called me on the 27th in the evening and I said it's wrong, it's false. And he makes these statements without any evidence. And uh, let him give us evidence. Let him give us proofs. Uh, only words. We can also say many words. We don't. We behave in a uh, responsible way. There is not a single evidence of any foreign presence in Azerbaijan. What we do, we do ourselves. We have capable army. We have enough people in our uh, army. We have enough people in our reserves. I announced uh, partial mobilization, mm -hmm. which will uh, allow us to involve tens of thousands of uh, reservists, if necessary. So we don't need it. Armenia needs it, because Armenia population is declining, and it's only two million people. Therefore, they themselves now recruit people from Middle East, and we have evidences, and not only of Armenian origin. And by the way, it doesn't make any difference whether it's of Armenian origin coming from Middle East mm -hmm. or non-Armenian origin. If anybody comes from outside to fight as a mercenary, that should be uh, internationally addressed. So it is, these accusations are absolutely groundless and we reject them and we demand the evidences to be put on the table. Um, will you also be presenting your evidence 
uh, on the foreign mercenaries that Armenia brings? Uh, we have already some uh, intelligence information and plus we have just yesterday I was shown that there are uh, videos in the internet as uh, people from Middle East are sitting together with Armenian soldiers and they have in uh, their uniform they have uh, Armenian uh, national flag and they sit together and discuss you know it is without uh, voice but it's enough I think and uh, they must um, you know, be responsible for that. So could diplomacy ever work or is the war only solution for you? I said already, diplomacy can work if Armenia uh, will comply with international law, will start immediate withdrawal from part of the uh, territories in timetable. And of course, we uh, need to restore territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. And by the way, uh, when we were discussing the issues on negotiation table before this government in Armenia came to power, one of the first items was the conflict must be resolved on the basis of territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. It must be restored. That's what we demand, and I think we are right to demand it. President of Azerbaijan, Ilham mm -hmm. Aliyev, thank you very much for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you.